Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of AP Human Geography Review with Mr. Elrod. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the concentric zone model. This actually comes by way of a request from one of my students, so a shout out to Rita in my first period. Uh, so I hope you find this review helpful. First thing we'll do is we'll talk about the basics of the model, uh, the concentric zone model. Uh, first of all, it was uh, established by the geographer Ernest Burgess in 1923 uh, to discuss the positioning of the different activities uh, in an urban center and is based off this, uh, the development and the growth of the city of Chicago. Uh, when we look at the concentric zone model, you can see it off here to your right, you'll notice that it looks very similar to Von Thunen's model and a lot of that has to do with some similar ideas to Von Thunen about the cost of land and activities that will take place around the urban center and the relationship to the cost of land. We'll talk about we'll talk more about that here in just a minute. But obviously the most important element of the model is going to be the uh, the central business district or the urban center. Uh, remember when, when we're talking about urban areas, uh, one of the most important places is that central business district. It acts as the market. It acts as the place of exchange. If we look at cities historically, uh, cities taking off as as places of exchange where folks would come in from other uh, either other cities or uh, from far and wide to exchange their goods and then uh, the modern cities adopted that uh, very similar feel in terms of their purpose uh, and so the concentric zone model reflects that with the central business district being at the very center. Uh, one thing to remember is that no model is perfect. Uh, it's absolutely impossible to uh, portray the landscape uh, in any kind in, in a perfect way and so we'll just have to remember when we look at these five perfect circles we know that that's never going to happen but it still portrays uh, the basic concept or the basic idea is that the activities will be distributed uh, away from the urban center in relationship to the cost of land and accessibility to the urban center. And I'll again, I'll talk more of that and just more about that in just a second. So, if we look at these five rings, we see over here to the right, we see a description, a very short description of the different activities that will take place in that particular ring. So, of course, one, the central business district or the urban center. Two is what's called the zone of transition. It also has some other names, um, like the industrial zone, manufacturing, and wholesale. Uh, zone. So in this in this particular area, we typically are going to find uh, industrial work going on, manufacturing, that secondary economic activity that we discussed in our uh, economics and industrial unit. You also might find some uh, for, some housing for workers who are going to be working in the industry and things like that. And we also move out to uh, we move out to section uh, to ring three. You notice that two is called the zone of transition because what we're doing is we're transitioning from uh, industrial work into residential areas and also uh, you see kind of a movement back and forth of people between uh, two and three uh, people moving in inside these rings outside these rings depending on uh, what their particular position in, uh, in in the workforce is and also their ability and their need to access those particular spaces uh, ring three is uh, over here on the chart is called the blue uh, area of blue collar residents so we're talking about your lower income uh, workers, most of them who are working in Ring 2, uh, so they need to be close by so that they can uh, access those particular activities and make it to work. Uh, typically, they're not going to have their own personal transportation, so they'll need public transit, uh, also characterized by high-density housing, so apartment buildings, high-rises, things along those lines. When we move out to Circle 4, this is going to be kind of, in today's terms, talking about uh, areas that would be more like our suburbs. Uh, so these, of course, are going to be your middle classes. And typically, people who have transitioned from area from ring two to ring three are looking to get out to ring four into these middle income areas of single family housing, uh, more space. You know, people who have the ability to own a car or maybe they have they can take public transit into work, uh, but they are able to afford the ability to live out in some of these. Lar uh, areas to get larger houses and to have more personal space and then of course zone 5 is called the comm commuter residential area these are typically the people of the highest incomes in fact uh, people who are some of the wealthiest who have you know some estates or some large uh, areas on rural residences but they still interact with the urban center on a regular basis and so they have some form of personal transportation or again they're able to take public transit from the place where they live into the urban center, but they're a little bit more free with their movement. Uh, and again, if we look over here to the last explanation, we look at the five rings and we talk about the fact that the distribution of the activities are going to be based upon the cost of land and the, and the affordability of the land and also the ability to access that particular urban area 
or the the urban area, which is primarily the central business district. Uh, so we want to look at the types of living that people have, uh, in t whether we're talking about in zone three where we have high density, zone four where it's lower density, and then of course zone five where it's the lowest of all density, and the cost of living in those places plus the ability to access the urban center again. We look at like zone three, these people typically may not have their own personal form of transportation. Um, they may not have their own car, but not only would they have to have a car, but they'd have to have a place to store that car and the gasoline to put in that car and then to pay for the tag on the car and the insurance. And so they may not be able to afford those things. So they would need to live closer to the urban center and the industrial area so that they can move from one to the other. Uh, so when we look at the uh, when we look at the model here a little bit more closely, I'm going to do a couple things, do a little bit of drawing and things like that uh, to help you understand just a little bit better. One of the things to remember is that historically in the urban center, we had some of our wealthiest residences, and they were living initially in the urban center. But if you'll remember with industrialization, what began to happen is those people that were living out here in the periphery, uh, you know, our, our rural farmer, uh, they started to come to work in the cities uh, trying to get jobs in the factories. So with the development of factories and things, you started to see uh, some of these poor farmers move into the urban center. And so, of course, the wealthy folks, they, they didn't much care for being around uh, the rural poor and their crowded tenements and, and apartment homes and things like that. So they began to move out, especially as transportation became more accessible and affordable. And then, of course, what began to happen here in, in kind of the urban center, whether we're talking about Zone 2 or 1, uh, you had a situation where people started to rise in income levels. And so you had the people who had originally come uh, into the urban center looking for work, they they get uh, you know they move into the middle class, so they want to move out of the urban center also and get a little bit more space, things along those lines. As this area becomes more crowded, then the wealthy people again, you know, move even further out, and so you'll start seeing this kind of indicated as the development of suburbs. And so what happens is as be people become wealthier, uh, they desire more space, they want better living conditions, they want to be away from the crampness and the crowdedness of the cities. Uh, get away from the poverty of the cities and things like this. And so you have even more people of middle income moving out uh, to these what eventually becomes uh, suburban areas. And those are the wealthier people as they continue to try to get away from some of the some, some of the uh, middle income, lower middle income folks who are able to access the suburban areas. Again, especially as transportation improves, you're going to kind of see these people begin to push out until we finally have this idea of counter-urbanization where the wealthiest residents are now living out here. Again, uh, they have money so they can buy these estates out here. They also have the ability to afford the, uh, the transportation from their location, their home, back into the urban center. But that's really what allows some of these rings to grow because people are continually pushing out from the urban center. Now again, you see kind of a cyclical movement sometimes between these uh, situations, so from 2 to 3, and then maybe back from 3 to 2, uh, as people are kind of moving back, and then maybe from 4, four to 2, or from 4 to 3, as people are kind of transitioning uh, from one position to the next. And then, of course, you know, th to make matters even worse, you could talk about things like gentrification, where people from these outside areas, these very wealthy people, begin moving back into the urban area. Uh, and so, you know, these cyclical patterns of movements in the urban areas are really what allow us to see kind of this, uh, this development of the concentric zone model uh, and people moving to the different areas, the development of the suburbs and things along those lines. Another element that will help us to understand the concentric zone models is called the bid-rent curve. Uh, this particular curve it shows a correlation between the cost of land and distance from the urban center. So, of course, we know that the cost of land is going to be relative to the proximity to the central business district. The closer we move to the central business district here, the more expensive land is going to be. And so what you'll notice here is you have a direct linear correlation between uh, the amount of money that certain activities are willing to pay and their distance to the urban center. And you'll notice if we, if we put this out on a plane, uh, it ends up becoming uh, the central, uh, the concentric zone model. So you notice this first ring here is all of your, uh, typically your service, your market-oriented things, uh, services, businesses that want to be in the urban center. The second ring is your industry because it needs a little bit more land. It doesn't necessarily want to pay the high cost of being in the urban center, but it needs to transport its goods back to the urban center, and so it's going to want to be close. And then you see the people who want to be the furthest out are going to be those who are residential because 
they are willing to pay the least amount of money in order to uh, to pay for their land but then also be able to access the urban center uh, and so if we understand that relationship between proximity uh, to the urban center so here at the central business district and the price of the land we can begin to understand uh, the layout of the land in terms of where certain activities are beginning to play, take place. Now the bid rent curve is not necessarily to say that it makes the concentric zone model but it helps us to understand the concentric zone model just a little bit better. So uh, again that was just a, a, sh a brief explanation of the concentric zone model. I hope that helps you uh, to understand it just a little bit better. One note, one final note I might make is that uh, all the other models when we look at uh, American city models are primarily going to be based upon uh, transportation and the ability to transport oneself uh, relatively freely and autonomously. And so the concentric zone model uh, is the one that kind of breaks that mold in that it's not based upon transportation methods, but primarily cost of land and the ability to access the urban center. So anyway, I hope you found uh, this particular PowerPoint helpful. Again, if you have any suggestions, uh, please let me know in, my, in the comments box. Uh, like the videos. Uh, let me know what you want to see, and then I'll create some more videos to help you review. Uh, so, so good luck to you as you study.